welcome back to the channel and we're away from the Fulcrum Centre and all work because we're away in our little tiny caravan for three nights in Norfolk literally just to get some headspace and chill out so here I am back from a day of touring garden centres too windy outside to film today without my little microphone which I still haven't set up properly so I'll overlay as much as this someone did say on the videos recently um, Dave more bird time less face time Goodness me, do I completely agree with you there. It's just that it's a time of year where a lot of these videos, I'm not really doing anything with the birds about the videos. Um, hopefully we'll get a lot more bird time as the season kicks in. Even if nothing else, I get out with the boys to start with because my season's going to start a bit late due to other commitments. The magic ingredient to training birds of prey isn't something books can tell you and it's not something I can show you. It's something I can explain to you and then it's something you've got to find your own way or not. It's an ingredient that's different from the normal, the normal Fulcrum books, Fulcrum videos. But if you read, learn, listen, <laughs> that dog does not want to share its food. If you read and listen to other people, whether it's proper books, please read some proper books, as well as social media. You can get to a competent level, uh, a beginner's level, a competent level, even a pretty darn good falconer. But the magic ingredient, if you can factor that into your falconry, falconry will get you, it will, it will transform your falconry. It will transform how you understand, look at the birds, the way the birds behave, but it isn't something I can show you. But for sure, if you understand Fulcry equipment, Fulcry furniture, and my understanding is understand how it works and why you use stuff. Again, it's all different from that parrot fashion thing. If you understand how to hood the birds, how to man the birds, how to train the birds, and so on, you can become a good falconer. The problem you've got is, Every single bird you train is completely different. Me, you, and two of our mates all take four male Harris Hawks from the same clutch, the same brood. Those birds will all be completely different. Just like if we had four kids from the same two parents, they're going to be completely different. And this is the key. Now, some people have this magic ingredient in their falconry um, as a natural ability to a high level even when they first start. Emily, uh, our young girl, really young to me, at Icarus Falconry, she's she's a natural because she has this magic ingredient. doesn't mean she's brilliant off the bat, but it means she has an ability that other people may not ever acquire. It's a difficult thing to, to discuss. So what would you need? I think if you've got empathy and you're an empathetic person like I am, It'll come more naturally. I think if you're a psychopath and you just think the birds are machines and that's how you view the world, you don't have any empathy at all. It's like, this is what I want you to do. The book says this is how I go about getting you to do that. And you don't do that, a bird. I'm getting rid of you. You're untrainable. If you've got that attitude, you'll never become a really great falconer. You'll just get three birds and you'll get one that, that, that works under your conditions and your training methods. And that bird will will succeed and it will make you happy enough um but you might pass off birds at six months old willy-nilly deeming them as useless untrainable and so on because they won't bend to fit your methods now if you're not a psychopath but you're like i was and you learned from people and you learned from books the problem you've got is one size just doesn't fit all not to progress to a great level with any particular bird my 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 favourite how-to Fulcry book is Philip Glazier's. I think there's no better book that's written in detail of, of like almost almost if this goes wrong, try this. Incredibly hard to write a how-to Fulcry book, but it's a book you could actually practice Fulcry from with no input from anyone else. You could make the kit, you could train the birds, you could go hunting. But of course, again, it's 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 just a generic textbook, and there's no other way of doing it. When I'm doing my YouTube videos, I try and say, well, if this and this, and, and if this doesn't work, you can try this. But again, it's generic. So the magic ingredient would be akin to, if you were training horses, what people would, would call a horse whisperer. So a horse whisperer 
does not whisper into the ear of the horse, this is what I want you to do. Do it like this when I was looking and pretend that you know, I trained you. They're not whispering knowledge into that horse. Talking in a horse language, maybe, to get it to do things. All they are are people that are really empathetic to the horse and they put themselves in the mind of the horse in any given moment into that particular individual horse. Why is it doing this? So you may have imprinted your first bird or your last bird or your umpteenth bird very successfully. Hopefully you understand hooding and you can hood your hawks and birds of prey and you know why you're hooding them and you understand all that kit and so on and so forth. I would imagine a lot of this stuff by then you have become a pretty good falconer. But let me just tell you what the difference actually is. The step up, the one thing that makes you different from I guess most people I think we had the Merlin guys up at Holdenby oh I don't know maybe five years maybe six years ago now I was watching one of those chaps feeding up his Merlin at the end of the day and I literally watched him feeding his bird and I thought yeah you are a cut above it stands out so like I said someone that's a horse whisperer they don't whisper in, in the horse's ears they're just empathetic and they understand how the horse's mind works. And that's all it is. So when I was in my middle teens, I was gifted a barn owl, uh, already trained. And then, of course, being a boy, I wanted something bigger. And I just trained my first bird of prey, reared and trained a Bengal eagle owl. Uh, and from then on, trained various other owls. Went on to look at uh, fly red tail. Went on to buy train a, a, a nine week old goshawk. Later, uh, a Harris's hawk. Uh, years later, another goshawk. And it was still out of the books what I'd been told. And that's the difference. It was probably about 15 years ago, returning from living in Spain, when I took on a one year old, a second year imprint goshawk. The internet become more widely available. I'd run an awful lot more about different training. Upda the internet just updated everything. So did the Harris Hawk. That mass production of falconry and the ability to share knowledge around the world. And the thing that clicked was getting into the minds of those birds of prey. So basically, you now you understand the art, the practice of falconry. You've trained your bird and you're on your way. And you're a pretty good falconer. The magic ingredient that's going to stand you above that, it's going to make you have the ability to be a really excellent falconer is simply understanding the mindset of these birds. It's understanding, putting yourself into that bird's head, understanding what, how the bird thinks. So when a bird reacts, does something, baits, bites, whatever, you've got an insight into why it did that. And when you can understand why the bird does something, you can also understand how to train it in a much more sympathetic way that will negate a lot of the negativity, if not almost as much as possible, and only promote the positivity. Little tiny things that will make the world of difference, the world of difference to your training of your bird. And people still say to me, Dave, you don't need to hood this bird or that bird. So again, when you understand how to hood a bird and why, and then you understand how the mind of the bird thinks, just that one example means that you can have a bird that is trained with absolutely minimal stress and sees you absolutely minimally as a cause of stress. If you insist on carrying your hook, your goshawk, let's just say, uh, here, there and everywhere, and your attitude is, this is what you're going to have to fly with, get used to it, get used to these surroundings, and the bird is panting and collapsed on your glove, stressed to the max, baited, 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 now it's at the point of collapse. What on earth in your brain would make you think, 
you're forming a great bond with that bird. You're now, you're working towards that bird, looking forward to being with you. It's <laughs> weight management, which again, you need to learn, and food management, which again, you need to learn, is is just part of falconry. You you can train a bird by making it really hungry, but how are you going to get it super fit if it's really hungry and so on and so forth? Understanding how the bird is seeing the world, how the bird is viewing what you're doing, how the bird is trying to work out its place as this newfound team member. If you can understand how the bird thinks, your falconry will go to another level. My son Kyle is another example. He's incredibly compassionate and empathetic um to his charges he he really views things he knows that when his female harry sork flies down a hair that bird's going to struggle well some of the hairs he's caught not with this bird are 13 and a half pounds with the hawk eight to nine pounds this is a two less than a two and a half pound bird of prey if you understand that the bird that looks to you running across the field to help it and you understand that by doing so it will understand, help is coming. Your partnership will be far more of a bond than the person that says, what well, if it can't hold the hair, it doesn't, it, it, it's, you know, it's not suitable for the job. It's a hunting partnership, you're not bird watching. Think about how the bird's brain thinks, how the bird thinks you can actually, you can circumvent problems and things before they even occur by understanding your particular bird. So bear in mind, our birds of prey have got a thinking brain. Now they are not as clever as parrots or ravens. If you've ever trained a crow or a raven, they'll blow your mind. But yeah, different levels. So owls, we know their thinking brain is relatively low level. Caracaras, Harris hawks, vultures, they're right at the top when it comes to working stuff out among birds of prey. Eagles, yeah, they're not bad, they're not bad. They've got really their instinctive part of their brain and their thinking brain. And we're working with both as falconers, but that's something, if you understand, you can exploit much more. I'll give you a little anecdotal story to give you some kind of idea of what I'm talking about. When Wurzel flies, he soars above the audience. That's all he's got to do. He goes up, 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 looks magnificent, then stoops down to a glove at the end. Job done. There's an imprint. He's fed on the glove. When he returns, he gets two-thirds of his daily rations uh, on the glove. Let's say he's having day-old cockerels. He gallops them down whole and till they're coming out of his mouth again because he thinks me and the audience, being an imprint, he thinks we're all the same. And so in his brain, not the thinking part, just the, the subconscious, the hardwired part, is that we're all going to rush him and we all want that food as much as him. Of course we do. That's what bald eagles do. You've seen them on wildlife documentaries when the salmon are running. So he mantles a bit, his hackles come up, and he just eats like a pig. He doesn't enjoy his food. He larrups it down, hell-bent on getting that food down his gullet before anyone of us robs him of his food. Something I've always done. When he's had all he's going to have for his reward, I wipe his beak with my fingers, the right hand, the bare hand, and that triggers a switch in his brain. And he switches from the not the thinking brain, the reactive brain, the absolutely DNA hardwired part of his brain. He switches him over. Just We've done this for six years. A little penny drops subconsciously that no more food is going to be forthcoming. There is no more food there. Because I always do that when he's had all he's going to have. His hackles then drop down. His wings pull back in and fold up. And the bird changes massively psychologically. It goes from a frenzied, give me the food, give me the food. The bird is now looking around. It's looking at the audience. It's taking stuff in. It's visibly thinking and assessing its surroundings to the point it'll often then think, oh, I'll get back up in the air. We'll do it all again. I'll get fed again. But I circumvent that by hooding him in good time, stopping that trigger and that baiting while I'm holding his jesses. These birds are intelligent enough to think, 
but you need to be intelligent enough to get inside their brain and the flying of these birds and the training of these birds will be a whole new level. Try and understand them as much as you can. I can't teach you it, no book can. Some of you will never get this. Some of you, you'll be born with it and it'll be a completely different level, just a cut above of a falconer and falconry for sure, absolutely. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Bit of a weird waffle, a little bit repetitive in places I know. I am on holiday guys, give us a break and I'm literally filming this here, there and everywhere whenever I get a few minutes downtime or a few seconds with nothing else going on. Jackie's asleep. <laughs> well, well, one more thing I've had a few people message me and really about one of the videos but guys if you find any of my videos at all condescending they're not meant to be if you find any of my videos about certain species the species profile of birds and you find them in any way derogatory to that species or putting it down they're not meant to be absolutely not please watch them again with a different viewpoint this is the problem with social media text messages and even youtube videos you can be coming at them from an angle a preconceived angle and almost view them in a different way than they, they were actually filmed so always remember all these videos are meant to be positive helping you and if it's about a species of bird it will only be filmed positively as if i mention anyone personally they won't, no one is going to be put down unless it's a bit of Mickey taking for sure. Richie Latham, if you guys are looking for goshawks and Harris hawks, all strains of goshawks, I think. I don't know what he's got, but you've seen some of these wonderful pictures there and some fantastic high quality Harris hawks. Get in touch with Richie if you want a really top quality bird for next season for sure. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. And if you haven't already, do me a big favour. Click on subscribe. <laughs>